my new recipe, my new meat recipe. It's delicious. I love the texture. Erica loves it. We made one the other day and it's done. It's finished. It's so good. You can put it in sandwiches. I made, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. I made delicious pita bread and we put some of that meat with some grilled cabbage. It was so good, so good, so good. So I'm going to share the recipe with you. It's very easy, but very delicious. The magic word is delicious. All right, so we're going to start off with, we're going to take a food processor. Today I'm going to make double the amount. And what you're going to need, this is not a banana, it's a plantain, guys. My husband came home with so many of these plantains that we can't keep up with them. We love putting them in, in the air fryer, but I still have so many. I've made so many recipes out of it, and we still have plantain. What I decided was I was going to try out a new meat recipe using plantain, and wow, 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 it is so good. Your meat doesn't blow up like a balloon. It is really delicious. So we're going to start off with, since I'm making a double batch, we're going to use a whole plantain. And hopefully I can peel this. Now, how you cut it, it really doesn't matter. If it gets damaged, because it's going to have to get squished up anyhow. So here we go. Okay, and we're going to just cut it up to make it easy for my cheap food processor that I have. My other one broke, went to replace it, saw this one on sale, and it's not even a bad mark, it's a Cuisinart, but not as good as my other one. Now, if you don't have a food processor... I say take a fork and mash it up. I'm going to try to make my life a little easier. So I'm going to put this in the food processor and then I'm going to show you. Once we put in the vital wheat gluten, it's going to mix up and the bigger pieces will get mashed up. So I'm not even going to worry about it. Like I said, I never measure things. And this is what I use as my guide. When I made it, I have my um, my camping mug. This is a smaller one. So now that I have a full cup in here, I'm going to measure and tell you exactly what this measures. Okay, I've got my measuring cup. And it shows me that I have in here, I'd say one and a third cup of vital wheat gluten. So that's what I'm putting in. Okay. So to this, we're going to add some salt. Salt to taste, guys. And we're going to put some taco seasoning. Now, this is my mixture. If you want the recipe of this taco uh, taco mix, you can check my video. I'll put it somewhere at the end of the video or I'll write a link in the description. Uh, but you want to put, you want to put, here we go, one. For this batch, I would say two. Two tablespoons of the taco mix. If you don't want to make it, if you look, the, the taco mix, I think, is vegan. So you can use that to put in your, uh, in your meat. So that's going to work. And lightly mix this with your fingers. And now we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. Just a little. I'd say about a tablespoon of that. We've got the salt, and now we're going to put this back in, and we're going to mix it. Okay. Notice how it's still a little granular. That's because it's going to need a little bit of moisture now. 
Now, if you want, you could take just a little bit of flour, just kind of mix it in. That's about maybe a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons of flour. And we're going to add a little bit of water. And this you don't want to add a lot. You're going to add a little at a time. So we're going to start off with one, two, three tablespoons to start off with. And we still need water. So I'm going to put... Remember, I did this by eye, so I didn't measure anything. I'm measuring it for you. Uh, we're going to put another one, two, JJ, three, I'm going to do four. So that's four and three, seven tablespoons of water that we want to add to this recipe. JJ, stop it. And we're going to mix this again. Okay, uh, that's good. Okay, here we go. I just want to get my spatula. Yeah, a little wetter than what I did. So what you can do is use a little less water. Okay. So I am going to flatten this out and add some more. Give me that little extra flour. And we're going to okay, I need a little bit of oil. My oil has hot pepper seeds, guys, so don't freak out on me. Yeah, that's good. We're going to add a little more flour this way. And we're going to keep rolling it. JJ. Yeah, that looks good. And it feels good. Okay, so now you can kind of just pull on it. And by doing that, I'm not sure if you can see what's happening to it, it kind of gives it that fiber, that fiber look. You don't have to, that's up to you. Okay. Here we go. This is perfect. Okay. All right. Now we're going to put this aside and we're going to prepare ourselves the water to cook this in. I 
I just want to clean this up a bit. All right. Off to the side. Now we want, uh, notice how it's not just one ball, it's kind of strandy. That's going to help give you a very tender meat when you cut it. And you can make like a shishtauk recipe where you can shred that meat really fine uh, to put in sandwiches or in pita bread. It really gives uh, a nice, nice texture to the meat. You can also cut, of course, bigger chunks if you want and eat that on the side of your plate with some potatoes. But many ways you could do it. You could even take this meat once it's cooked or even now, uh, pull it apart and make chunks and then you can use it either in a stew meat um, or if you want to make like um, a butter chicken. But it is so good. I can't even tell you how good it is. My daughter ate it up in no time at all and she had the last of it this morning in her breakfast sandwich and it was delicious. Really good. So this is why I'm sharing it with you. Okay, so we're going to make a broth. There we go. And before I put that in, I'm going to add some water. I mean, I have my old broth that I used in my last recipe, but I wanted to show you, so I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to make it from scratch. That other one, I can use it for a gravy. And we're going to throw in some garlic. I don't even peel it. I've got three. Here we go. Four garlic heads. We've got five. Okay, we're going to add. Like I said, I just pour, so... I'm, me I'm measuring it for you. I'm hoping that it's going to work. Okay, so we're going to use about a quarter cup, maybe even an eighth of a cup. Let's see. Yeah, one eighth of a cup is more than enough. So that's what I'm using. One eighth, not a full quarter. Just rinse it in there. Yeah. We're going to put a little molasses. And we're going to put, I'd say, about a heaping tablespoon of molasses. Okay, we want to put salt in the water. So we're going to put about, let me see if I can measure it for you. It should be like a half a tablespoon. Yeah, half a tablespoon. You could even put... A little more that's just gonna salt the meat on the outside give it a nice flavor and we're gonna put just a drizzle of olive oil there we go small drizzle and we're gonna bring this to a boil once it comes to the boil you put your meat in there and lower it and let it simmer for one hour guys my daughter's so excited, I told her, you know what, I'm going to make a new batch of meat. And this way I can make a recipe for everyone. And she was very happy. Okay, so boil, bring it to a boil. Once it's boiled, we're going to add, we're going to add the meat. There we go. You can even make your meat ahead of time. And then cook it the day after. That's really up to you. Just wrap it and put it in the refrigerator. And this meat is not going to like blow up like normally when you make a seitan roast. It expands. You don't have to wrap it. It's not going to blow up the way you think. It's going to stay really, really nice. And then I'll show you what I do to the outside. You know what? This time around I'm going to put a little bit of my... Uh, I'm going to put like a half... A half of oak leaf. Now I know you're not going to have oak leaves right now because I'm sure you didn't bring any in. You have probably had no idea. Uh, but I use this for my pickles because it has a lot of tannins in it. And it 
gives it more of an earthy taste. So I'm going to use this in my water just so that it can spice up the water a little bit. See if there is a difference by using the oak leaf. Right now I'm going to test it out with my, um, with my seitan. I'm even going to put a bay leaf in there since I have it and just see the flavors it gives the broth and the meat. There it is. I used to have, well, I used to have, I still have, uh, I got this at the Asian market. It, uh, I'm not sure if you ever had Asian uh, mock meat. It has like a five spice taste. And I bought this years ago. And I think I'm going to put a bit of it in the water and see if it's any good. Now remember, you don't have to do this because I'm sure you're not going to have this at home. Uh, do it without. Here, let me just lower this water. Uh, so do it without, but I'm going to test it this time around, and then I'll tell you if it's better or not. All right, I'm just going to put one and a half teaspoons, just to see. doesn't hurt to try, right? Okay, so now my water has come to a boil. There's my water, and I'm going to put my meat in there and I am going to simmer this for a whole hour. There it is. Sorry, I keep taking it away from you. So I'm going to simmer this for one hour. Cover it. Oh yes, I can smell the five spice. Now if you don't have this, uh, actually you could go to your Asian market and see if you could find it. It's called beef stew spice and you can really smell the five spice in it. But if you have five spice at home, maybe not this time around but the next time you could try adding some i would say do it without uh, if you don't have this don't put it in the water i'm trying it this time around the last time i didn't use it and we loved it and i'm sure we're going to love it with this in the water you could even probably put this right in instead of the taco mixture you could probably put some of this in there you could put whatever you want in the meat if you don't have taco use something else okay guys I want to show you as you could tell it got bigger but it is not one of those sponge balls look at this it really has a delicious delicious smell now if you don't like five spice leave it out so I'm gonna keep cooking this like I said it's gonna cook for an hour it's almost half an hour that it's been in there it got big but it didn't uh, over expand but I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I'll see you later on when the meat cools off. And then we're going to do something else to the meat. So I'll see you in a bit, guys. We are going to... We're going to get a pan. We're going to add some olive oil. We're going to add some olive oil. We're going to add a little maple. Now this is the way I season it guys. You don't have to do the same thing I do, but it's nice to get a nice crispy skin on this piece of meat. We've got some maple, we've got a little mustard. I'm using yellow for now, but you could use Dijon if you want. Some Montreal. And we're gonna put our beautiful roast. Look at this meat. You can actually just shred it. Look at that. Ta da! Look at that. Beautiful. Mmm. That's gone. That is so good. Okay, so we have it on high. Look, Erica. Look at this meat. Look at that. Mmm. Beautiful. Give it a nice crispy coating. Now I'm going to lower the heat because I want it to cook slowly. But that's how easy it is to make this recipe. Right on top. 
and we're gonna cut some slices and don't throw away that broth guys you can use that broth for gravies you can use it for a soup starter uh, there's so many things you could do also with that water so don't throw that uh, don't throw that away it's really delicious really delicious now this meat is hot so it's gonna be even nicer once it cools off but this meat is so tender and I told you nothing blows up on this meat Look at that. Mm. This cuts like forqueta. Look at that. You could cut it thin, you could cut it, and that's what the meat looks like in the inside. Beautiful, beautiful, delicious meat. Erica, do you want to try it? Mm hmm. Mm. Is it as good with the uh, Asian uh, seasoning on the outside? It's very good. Yeah? Good. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. There's that meat. Look how tender. You could cut it thin. You could cut it thick. There's so many ways you can eat it. But when I say the meat is delicious, it's delicious. There's the meat. That's the size it came out. It did not blow up the way, say, tan usually blows up. And it is so delicious. We have it in the morning for breakfast. Really, really good. You could eat it for dinner, you could eat it for lunch, you can make sandwiches, you can make it uh, as, part as, as part of a meal. There's so many dishes you can use this meat. So I'm going to say I love you guys, and if you try this recipe, come back, let me know what you think. It re really is good. Now I used that seasoning on the outside. I threw some of that seasoning in the water uh, just to try it out. But I made a batch without the uh, that Asian five spice. And if you do have some sp five spice, I say go ahead, throw some of that in the water because it's just as good as the first time I made it. So there you go. Meat made with plantain and vital wheat gluten. Delicious, delicious, delicious. And I'm going to say I love you guys. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps my videos. So I'm going to say thank you. I love you. And I'm going to see you soon in my next one. So I'm going to put some pictures of how I presented this meat to my family. And it's going to be at the end of the video. So I'm going to say I love you and I'll see you soon.